chapter 17. Minley gulped as she walked toward the gray stone wall of the city. As she passed the two stone lions marking the entrance, she glanced behind her. Even though she only saw trees and shadows, she knew the dragon was hidden there. Quickly, she pushed through the doors of the gate, leaving the forest and the dragon behind her. As the gate closed, Minley stared. The streets were crowded and bustling. The city seemed to be bubbling with people like boiling rice. Vendors selling fruit and shoes called out their wares while people rushed past. Some pushing wheelbarrows or balancing baskets on their shoulders. A large, muddy water buffalo, led by a boy perhaps a year or two older than Minley, wandered through and was ignored as commonplace, as a commonplace occurrence. Watch out, little mouse, a gruff man said behind her, his baskets of cabbages driving her into the crowd. As she was shoved and pushed, Minley grabbed the arm of the boy with the water buffalo. Hi, she said. If I want to see the king, where do I go? The king? The boy looked at her in surprise. You'd have to go to the palace. How do I get to the palace? Minley asked. Just follow the black stones, the boy said, pointing at the road paved with polished bricks. They'll lead you to the city. Wait, Minley said. Isn't this the city? The palace is in another city? You must not be from around here, the boy laughed. The city of bright moonlight is divided into two. This is the outer city, where anyone can live and travel. The inner city is where the palace is, where the king and officials live. You have to have permission to go into the inner city. If you don't, you're not going to be able to see the king or the palace. There are thousands of guards protecting the inner city. They won't let anyone through without permission. I'll find a way, Minley said confidently. Thank you. And she let go of the boy's arm and headed towards the black road. However, as Minley got closer to the inner city, she realized the boy was right. The red walls of the inner city loomed tall and forbidding and every gold-studded gate door was guarded by at least two soldiers, their silver armor reflecting in the hot sun. It would be a daunting task just to enter the inner city, much less find the palace or the king. But I must, Minley said to herself. Regardless, the guards' faces were stern and hard, and she quaked inside. If I asked to go in, Minley thought as she hung back amongst the fruit stands and fish vendors, they'll ignore me or force me with, away with their swords. And either way, I won't be able to see the king. What should I do? Not as easy as you thought, huh? A voice said next to her. Minley turned and saw the buffalo boy standing next to her. Minley gave him a wry look. Boys she thought to herself, always thinking they know everything. Still, she had to admit he was right. She had no idea how she would see the king. They must let people into the inner city sometimes, Minley said. They do, said the boy. Once a year at the moon festival, they open the gates to everyone. When's the moon festival, Minley asked. Already happened, the boy said. You'll have to wait until next year. Minley bit her lip in frustration. What was she going to do? I don't know why you want to go in there so badly, the boy said. The buildings and clothes are nicer, but the people, a bunch of puffed up frogs. At the moon festival, one of the stable men wanted, wanted to order me around and thought he could trick me into thinking he was the king. When I asked why he wasn't wearing a golden dragon, he knew his prank wasn't going to work. Did he think I was crazy? Everyone knows a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings and the emperor. The people in there think that we're, bunch, we're, we're just like a bunch of oxen. The buffalo beside the boy gave a snort at that. Sorry, the boy said, patting the buffalo on his nose. You know I didn't mean that. But by this time, the inner city guards had seen them lingering by the gate. You there, kids, one of them barked. Move along. 
Come on, the boy said, tugging Minley's sleeve. Let's go. Minley followed him and the buffalo. Where are you going? She asked him. I'm going home, he said. You can come too if you want. And since Minley had no place else to go, she did.